Tonight, the road to crowning the PBA League Elias Cup champion begins with a play-in round for the final spot in the quarterfinals. A full house awaits. Portland is ready. Let's get rolling, shall we? It all starts on FS1 right now. so great for the PBA on Fox Sports to be back in Portland, Maine. The road to crowning an Elias Cup champion is underway. And these folks, they've got lobster in them, some beverages, and they're ready for some bowling. He's the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson. I'm John Fanta. Randy, here we go. The conclusion of the PBA season this week in Portland, Maine. What distinguishes the Elias Cup from the other events? Hard to hear you, John, but I think I know what you just said. Other than the majors, this is the most anticipated event on the PBA Tour, and for a number of reasons. One, it's in Portland, Maine. Two, it's at Bayside Bowl. And three, these are the best fans in the sport of bowling. The best fans. And they're ready this week to watch their Portland Lumberjacks, the three-time defending champions of the Elias Cup, who are the number one seed. Number one seed looking to do something that's never been done in the history of the Elias Cup, win it four times. Quarterfinals tomorrow night on FS1. The Lumberjacks, they don't have to get into action until Tuesday at 8 Eastern time on FS1. The Lumberjacks and Strikers, the top two seeds. Our format today, it's a step ladder. You have six through 10 playing for that sixth seed into tomorrow night's quarterfinals. Let's meet our first team, the 10th seeded Chicago Breeze. Although the team formerly known as the Hitmen has a new name, the Chicago Breeze are still led by Dom, 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 Dom Barrett. And two-time major champion, Tom Smallwood. Manager Jason Couch also returns to a team that nearly captured the Elias Cup in 2018. Please welcome the guaranteed late Chicago Breeze, leading off Jake Peters. Bowling second, Kevin Williams. The man in the middle, bowling third, Tom Smallwood. Bowling the fourth and ninth frames, Dom Barrett. The anchor man is Tomas Keku. The Chicago Breeze, managed by PBA Hall of Famer, Jason Couch. Please welcome the PBR Milwaukee Pounders. In the three seasons that the team has existed, the Milwaukee Pounders have twice advanced to the Elias Cup semifinals. Key in those efforts was former league MVP Dick Allen, who returned to join leader Sean Rash on the Pounders, as well as journeyman A.J. Chapman. Leading off for the Pounders, Dick Allen. Bowling second, Anthony Lavery Spar. The man in the middle, bowling third, Sean Lavery Spar. Bowling fourth, A. J. Chapman. The anchor player, Sean Rash.
The Milwaukee Pounders are managed by PBA Hall of Famer, the Medford Meteor, Marshall Holman. Kimberly Pressler is the third member of our team, and she's with the managers. So what is it that you decided to do? To We're having some difficulty with Kimberly's mic. We'll visit with them in a little bit, but we're just moments away from Chicago and Milwaukee to kick off a huge evening here in Portland. So again, the deal, a stepladder. These are the two bottom seeds. Take us through the mentality that it takes. We'll get to that in a minute. Randy, let's go back to Kimberly's with the managers. Little technical difficulty there. It's happened with live TV. So we are back. So Jason, I know you didn't get to hear me just now. So listen, I was saying to you that you told us that you guys did six different lineup changes during qualifying because you guys just could not find your rhythm. Why did you go with the lineup you did tonight? Because it's the right lineup and we're not going to go wrong. We're going to run the table tonight. I wouldn't expect any other answer but that from you. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. And Marshall, you also said that you guys struggled a bit in qualifying. In fact, you said the odds were against you. So what strategy do you guys have tonight to swing those odds into your favor? Well, you know, it's a it's one game shootout. So, you know, we got to win the first game and then then go to the next one. But I've also switched my lineup a little bit. And uh, my guys, I think they seem a little more ready tonight than they were, you know, yesterday. So we'll see. Well, this guy over here seems pretty confident. Are you guys confident? We are always cautiously optimistic. We're the pounders, damn it. <laughs> All right, let's get to some bowling, guys. Uh, vintage Marshall Holman, I love it. That is outstanding stuff to set the tone for the pounders, but let's take a look at lineups. We'll start with Chicago. What do you make of this lineup? I mean, hey, I, you know, Jason Couch knows what he's doing when he sets this lineup, but what's interesting is the anchor bowler is Thomas Keiko. Never won on the PBA Tour. He did finish uh, in the top five at the U.S. Open earlier this season, so he has a little bit of television experience, but he's a first-timer here in Portland, Maine. He's never experienced anything like this. Sean Rash in the anchor spot for Milwaukee. Makes sense. He's been there. So Jake Peters will get it started. Peters, a 13-year pro. One PBA Tour title in his career. Strong start for Chi-Town. It is a Baker Bowling format, folks. Yes, this is team bowling. This is what it's all about. They're competing for a combined $100,000 for the first place team this week. Number nine versus number 10 seeds. Dick Allen for Milwaukee. Uh, Baker format. Each player is going to get two frames to bowl. Uh, probably the most important frame is that tenth frame. Better have the right player in that anchor position. And Dick Allen, no stranger to this event, former MVP. So here's the 30-year-old Kevin Williams has his music career on the side. A rapper, a songwriter, has his own YouTube channel. The lefty. Hey, seven pin, have a nice day. Wow. Well, the Breeze felt like they had nothing to lose. Said all those nice things about Kevin Williams. He's also a newly crowned PBA Tour champion this season. Lavery Spar twins highlight things from Milwaukee. And here's Anthony. Chicago and this crowd loves it. What a start to the week. Hey, check that. Kevin Williams won in 2022 Shark Championship, but this player's off to a red hot start, perfect through two. On to the veteran Tom Smallwood, one of the great guys in the PBA from Saginaw, Michigan, two time Players Championship winner in 2018 and 2009. And Smallwood keeps the strikes rolling. <laughs> There was a sitcom about this guy. That's how cool Tom Smallwood is. 
Nothing better than rolling the four pin for your team when they're working on a double. On to the other of the twins, the Lavery Spar twins. Here's Sean. The way these two feed off one another, we heard yesterday talking with Milwaukee, talking with Marshall Holman, how much they feed off one another, how much they can serve in the two, three spots in this lineup. Bingo! Good stuff. Look at that rep rate, too, almost at 500. Shot a first timer here to Portland, Maine. Gets to team up with his brother Anthony. It's pretty cool. On to Dom Barrett. We had, we had a great discussion with yesterday. It's always a great discussion anytime you're able to talk with Dom. The first European to win the PBA Triple Crown World Championship US Open Tournament of Champions. Three time major winner from England. Oh, they've come to play in Portland. So far, so good for the lineups, right? Yeah. After five frames, these two teams are going to swap lanes. Let's we'll see how that factors in to this strike test thus far. Marshall Holman did make the statement that's probably representative of everybody here. It's a new day. Who cares where we're seated? We're always optimistic. Yeah. One, two, four. That one was way south of where he wanted it. And not enough friction to get that ball back to the pocket. The streak ends at three for the Pounders. And now a big shot here for A.J. Chapman. Right lane will be more challenging than the left. It's tight. Yeah, I mean, when you talk to the players, they all say the same thing about the right lane. Tight down lane, you got to be a little bit more careful on that right lane. The left lane is the easier of the two. And keep in mind, the higher seed team gets to Come choose on, which one lane time, they buddy. start and which lane they finish on. What do you like about Thomas Tycho? This guy's sneaky good. I mean, his approach doesn't look like a whole lot, but this guy can flat pull. The pride of Finland. 25 years of age. Top three finish in the U.S. Open. And that one there is left of left. So AJ Johnson, AJ Chapman rather, gets one wide right, and then Thomas follows it up with one wide left. If he misses the five pin, he has to buy everybody in the stands a PBR. <laughs> Listen to this. They love the PBA. They live for this week. There you go. Tyco cleans it up. You know what they say, John. Nobody misses the five pin. On to Sean Rash. He's been dealing with some back issues. Hoping that he can put his best together this week. Dude. That's a great way to set the tone. Dealing with a back issue, he's going to have back surgery in December, this guy. He says, man, I'm just hoping I can walk and pick up my kids. Bowling future definitely, definitely undecided for Sean Rash. We're all hoping and praying for the best for his outcome. The Breeze and Pounders in a battle to start the week in Portland with the Elias Cup at stake. Sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Want to move fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at rate.com. Beautiful. Beautiful Maine. It is spectacular in Portland. And on the inside of Bayside Bowl, they have filled it up to start the week. First of four nights of action on FS1. Let's take a look at today's runs with oil pattern. The Mark Roth, 42. Yeah, 42 feet, and it's real gettable, meaning that the players have some room both left and right. And you can see they're going to play the inside part of the lane and then feed the ball to the track area. I think the most important 
thing for these players, though, is that number one, that leadoff bowler, because he's the one that needs to throw a perfect shot, especially right now at a commercial break. They've just changed lanes, and now Jake Peters is trying to execute a perfect shot so he can come back with intel for his team. It's again the nine versus 10 opener of the stepladder format to earn that sixth seed in tomorrow's quarterfinals. Chicago and Milwaukee, winner of this one gets Jason Belmonte and LAX. See that ball labor? We talked about it at the start. Two that four, right two, lane, split. it gets really slick down lane and sure enough, Jake Peters just found it. See it just laboring, comes in light, 2-4-10. What goes into this? He's gonna try to get the ball to the left side of the two pin, cut it over in the 10 pin. Peters with a tough shot and a lot to think about. All right, so now oh. he's gonna go back to his guys. He's gonna say, look, I made this adjustment. Remember, they got practice on both lanes. All right, this is what I did. I thought I threw it pretty good and the ball hydroplane. And all this intel is going back to his players. Same thing for this man right here, Dick Allen. Look at that two-time Elias Cup champion with Silver Lake. That's a huge opening for the Pounders, now up three. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> Dick Allen capitalizing, 23-year pro. We love Dick. They take the lead after that opening given to them by the breeze, and Dick Allen steps up and capitalizes on it. They were working on a strike, now they have a double and a 13-pin advantage. They're on the better of the two lanes. Back to Kevin Williams, started with a strike. And these teams, they played 10 games yesterday of qualifying. Three, like last three nine, nine, even tied on the left side. You in the lane. Run it down, kid. Run it down. These two were the bottom two seats. Portland with a score of 2,463. The number one seat, three-time defending champion, Lumberjacks. Go bowling Dallas Strikers with a score of 2,380. Milwaukee was the nine seed. Yes. Chicago was the 10 seed, which means Milwaukee gets the choice of starting lane, which determines what lane they finish on, right? That's correct. They chose to finish on the left lane. You can already see it's paying dividends right now based on the two shots we've seen from the breeze. That right lane, folks, will be more challenging. That's what the players have told us. And look at Anthony Lavery Spar. The yeah. twins, it, it's striking. Yeah, you can't tell the two apart. Are you able to? No. You're pretty smart. I I can't tell. I mean, I don't know the I don't know the twins as well as, as most of the guys out on this door, but. I mean, look at it. I think one's got a little bit more of a of a tan, a little darker. Yep. That's the only way you can tell. Last time I saw you was in May. Your haircut changed. Don't go there, John. Every <laughs> far, Anthony, with a strike for the Pounders. Another great shot there to capitalize once again. And the lead now 23 for the Pounders. We told you about that these are the nine and the 10 seeds. The team that doesn't have to play tonight, the Silver Lake Adam Splitters, highlighted by Tom Doherty. Chris Vine. They're the five. Small one. collected to this team. Cyborg, nothing bothers him. Just goes about his business, doesn't bother anybody. Very unassuming. So what did Sean learn from his brother Anthony? The Pounders with the lead. As they hit the eighth, up 23. Sean Lavery Spar. Oh, oh good shot. Even the 10. You see the max scores there, 244 for the Breeze, 256 for the PBR Pounders. And right now, all he wants to do is cover this 10 pin. 
keep his team clean through eight. Again, these teams, whoever wins this, you gotta run the gamut. You face LAX next, the eight. Yeah. Perfect. Well, that choice that you brought up a few moments ago to start on the right and end up on the left, and then out of the commercial break, a little bit of struggle for the breeze. Now here's Don Barrett, and this is a, a huge, huge shot for Don Barrett. Must strike. Must strike. Must strike situation, absolutely. Get it! Barrett delivers! See, in that same spot down lane right here, Don Barrett, with his touch, can get the ball to come around the corner. He just like rolls the living you know what out of this shot and it comes off of that spot faces the one three perfect that's a 10-time pba tour title winner that's your 2022 tournament of champions winner it's top 10 on the pba points list this year is don barrett and now here's aj chapman can he retain the control that the pounders have mm, the messenger just didn't come through very fortunate to me, that's the residue of the first shot he threw on the right lane when he whipped the head pin to the right. It's an overcompensation because it stays in the player's head. Hey, don't get it too far right. What happens, he gets it up the lane. Very fortunate, only to leave a 10 pin. Everything in this building just got very tense. Got real quiet. See the difference in the max. Cleans up. Don Barrett's big strike there in the ninth frame sets the tenth frame up for his team, gives them a chance. If both teams strike out in the tenth frame, the Pounders will win by one. This only, is what Thomas Keiko is built for. The only thing going through his head right now is throwing three. Throwing three strikes right here, right now. And you're high on his ability to do just that. You talked about what he's made of. Keiko. Does he have the clutch gene? Oh. Boom! Messenger, baby! <laughs> oh. That was an assault on the tent pin. <laughs> I mean, I think that's illegal <laughs> in some states. Watch this. Check out this pin action. Yeah. Bam! Bam! It's like you with lobster last night. I got nothing for you there. <laughs> nothing, because I saw you. I saw you in action. All right, big shot okay. coming up right here. This one gets him into the 240s. And then all the pressure, if he strikes here, all the pressure will go back to Sean Rash. This is a rookie, folks. Yeah, I mean, he's got US Open television experience. I mean, this guy is sneaky good. Nobody knows of him. Got the game face, Kaiko. In the biggest spot! Oh my goodness. How? How? Oh my goodness. All right, right now, Rash needs nine spare strike to win by one. Strike spare to win by two, assuming Tomas covers the eight pin. Mm -hmm. Man, what a great shot, and it's just such a horrible break. I think, I think the worst break for players is the 7-10, a pocket 7-10 yeah. hit, because now the chances of converting just a spare aren't very good. Sean Rash. Here he is. Sean Rash coming up on two decades as a pro. Oh, boy. Whoa. Well, the infamous Sean Rash Bach just came into play. He was fourth at the USBC Masters this year. Can he turn it on here for the Pounders and send them through? 
That's big time from Sean Rash trying to book a ticket with LAX. Well, there's a long way to go, but a great start for Marshall Holman's crew. And Sean Rash, instead of leaving the eight pin, he splits the eight, nine and a half on that shot right there. Nine pins here for Rash to get the Pounders to a showdown with the eighth seed. Jason Belmonte, Jacob Buttruff, Kevin McCune leading LAX. Rash and the Pounders are moving on. Finished by Sean Rash. They're going to move nice on. Bowling. Milwaukee had that decision, folks, to decide which lane. Picking the right to start and then ending up on the left. And Sean Rash and the Pounders knew exactly what they were doing because he strikes out. A really efficient performance by the Pounders. And what did he tell us? Howdy, guys. Now. We Don't heard work. from right. Marshall Holman right. who said, I'm optimistic. Now we're going. I believe that we have a run in us. But it's about to get tougher because Jason Belmonte, Belmo, is waiting for the Pounders. That matchup is next. Welcome back to the Pass Blue Ribbon PBA League Elias Cup Playoffs. The Milwaukee Pounders are a winner and they're on to the next round. Before we get to that next round, Saturday on Fox, Corey Seager leads the Rangers against the Mariners as each team battles for a spot in the postseason. Or the Orioles continue their fight for the AL East crown as they take on the Red Sox. It all begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, Saturday on Fox. Let's update where we stand. The Pounders winning and getting some really clutch bowling from Sean Rash in that anchor slot. But now they've got to meet LAX. And what a team this is. Let's meet them. LAX have never won the Elias Cup, losing three times in the finals. But joining Belmo this year on the LAX are three other major champions, including Thomas Larson, Kevin McCune, and Jacob Butra. Could this finally be LA's year? Please welcome the Bolero LAX. Leading off, Thomas Larson. <laughs> Bowling second, Jacob Buttruff. <laughs> the man in the middle, bowling third, Beef Stew Williams. Bowling fourth, Kevin McCune. The anchor is Jason Belmonte. The LAX are managed by USBC Hall of Famer Andrew Kane. <laughs> And Kimberly Pressler is with Jason Belmonte. So Jason, a lot of people around the world and in this building would say that you are the GOAT, but the one thing that you have not won in your career is this event, the Elias Cup. Is this the year your team wins it? Well, if it is, we're going to have to uh, climb a rather large ladder. Uh, I feel confident though in the boys. I mean, we looked really nice in practice and uh, you know, sometimes when you're at the very bottom, people don't really expect a lot from you. So, you know, we've got a really good, uh, a good feel amongst the group. Well, lane choice played a big part in the last match. How much is it into your strategy for today? 
Yeah, look, Andrew over the years has seen the left lane tend to, to blow open a little bit earlier than the right lane. And so we don't really know when it's going to happen. So we're going to try to stay away from it as long as possible. So we're going to finish on the right lane and thinking maybe it'll blow open right at the end of, of this game and, and mess them up a bit. We'll see if that works for you guys. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, interesting strategy. Yeah, what do you make of that? Well, I, obviously they, they like their ball reaction better on the right lane and you got a lot of heavy hands on that side along with the lefty Jacob Buttruff. Um, but they, this decision is based on their ball reaction and they think uh, that the left lane is going to implode and they're going to have a better look on the right lane towards the end of the game. Thomas Larson from Denmark will start them off. 2021 USBC Masters champion. Every player on this team, with the exception of Stu Williams, major champion, major championship winner. Larson gets it rolling. And it's amazing to think that Belmo has never been a part of an Elias know, top right? title. He's been with LAX the whole time. Yeah, and he's had struggles in, in this event over the years. PBA League revving up in 2013. Dick Allen and the Pounders, that's the other side. Here, Randy, they're in rhythm now. They're in, they're in motion. They've got to win under their belt some confidence. They have a game under their belt, and they know what both lanes are giving them, and they know the adjustments that are necessary. Once the lanes transition, they know the moves to make. So you go from Larson to Jacob Buttroff. And then you go that. 2 4 6 10. Well, Jacob didn't like this start, but he's going to try to get the ball over here to the left side of the two pin, cut it into the 6-10, the ball will take out the four. Second in the Players' Championship this year. Oh, and Buttruff, that is a rough start. Yeah, rumor has it that Jacob's not 100% physically either. He's battling some injuries, especially with his slide leg, his right leg. So the Pounders, the nine seed in this step letter. Again, we have six through ten with the Breeze out, the ten seed. They've got some momentum, and here's Anthony Lavery Spar. Spar! And the Pounders are cooking. <laughs> I think Anthony, the only player that I've seen thus far using urethane. So the pressure is now on Stu Williams. 15th year pro, two tour titles on his career. And Williams steps up when his team needed it. All right, now which one is this? Sean or Anthony? This is Sean. Are you sure? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you imagine being in this venue, bowling under, in this environment with your brother? Yeah. And your twin brother. All in the family, Lavery Spars. And Sean, like his brother. The Pounders are in rhythm and impressing as the number nine seed. All right, folks. Don't blink. <laughs> get ready for velocity. Get ready for power. Kevin McCune, players champion this year. How about this for a train, folks? Check out these numbers right here. Oh, yeah, just 21 and a half miles an hour like it was nothing. It's like he's throwing an eight-pounder down the lane, except when it hits the pins. Isn't it amazing, Randy, talking with Kevin McCune yesterday? as opposed to even six months ago when he was just starting to get on TV. Different kid. Different kid. Remember, he had to beat Zach and EJ Tackett just to start that player's championship run. But right now, nothing's stopping these pounders. Finally, a well-executed shot for AJ Chapman, who struggled early, going light and then high, but this time it's perfect. 
Now, the greatest bowler on the planet right here, Jason Belmonte, winning his player in major championship history on the PBA Tour. 15 majors, but he's never been a part of an Elias Cup title. Hard to believe. Super Slam in 2020, Belmo! <laughs> Needed it, got it. Will the Pounders blink? Will Sean Rash blink? Will Sean Rash's back hold up? That's another good question. Like Belmonte said, tall ladder to climb. Rash, again! He is stepping up for his team and serving in this anchor spot quite nicely. It's a nice little break there on a four-bagger. Make it five. Guess what happens when you get one more? Well, we'll tell you on the backside. They're fittingly the Pats Blue Ribbon. Milwaukee Pounders, Randy. More to come from Portland. Show offs. Welcome back to the PBA League Elias Cup playoff presented by Pat Blue Ribbon. We've got a battle here with the Pounders. The nine seed up on LAX halfway through. Tomorrow we're back with you at 7 Eastern time on FS1. Randy Peterson, tell us about it. Well, the winner of tonight's competition gets that spot right there and they'll face the number three seed Kingpins tomorrow night. 7 o'clock Eastern, only on FS1. That will be fun. And you get a, a great one between the high rollers and the atom splitters in the 4-5 battle. See players such as Francois Lavoie, A.J. Johnson on one side, Jesper Svensson, Tom Doherty on the other. Yeah! Big pull. Big pull. Oh, Big trouble. Leaves the 6-10, and that's fine, but the bad the bad news, they needed to keep striking. Remember, they have an open frame early, and that was in the second frame by Buttrup, but this is yanked big time. Remember, they chose to finish on this right lane. So tough for Larson, you're right. The, the right thought to be more challenging. That was their choice, because they thought that the, the left would open up, would, would potentially get testy, but instead, it's been the Pounders. It's been their show. We have a Paps six-pack alert. Yes. If there's a strike here, it's a hundred, it's $1,000 to the team, sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's a Paps six-pack. Pay the boys. Pay those boys. Dick Allen. And bucks to the Pounders. And a fist pump. And now, LAX Butra absolutely had to have a strike. But to think that a team that has Jason Belmonte, Jacob Buttruff, and Kevin McCune on it, major champions that they're staring at this deficit right now. Hey, Marshall, Randy, and this guy John sitting next to me in the booth. I want to know what you were thinking when LAX decided to finish this game on that right lane. We've all been talking about how tricky that right lane is. Yeah, I was a little bit, I was a little bit surprised, but um, hey, my guys are bowling great, so no matter where we're finishing, we're going to finish it. Oh, first on strike. Marshall, thanks. Best of luck the rest of the way. All right. Thanks, Randy. Well, you just heard from Marshall Holman, who it's, it's interesting because what did Kimberly say to him at the start? How do you feel about today? He said, well, I'm always optimistic. That wasn't the sense that we got from the Pounders talking with them as a team yesterday, but they said maybe a night of sleep will help. It did something. And there's the spare for Lavery Spar. He had 10 games of qualifying yesterday. Yeah. 10 games to figure out the seeding. And 
look, the top five, they get to sit and work on some things today. They don't have to compete. Pressure's off. Here's on, Stu Stan. Williams. Hey, John. Where's that right lane again? On, buddy. That decision appears to be proving costly. Oh, no. Oh, no. And 2023 will not be the year that Jason Belmonte finally wins an Elias Cup. See Sean Lavery Spar, top six finish in the Pokemon Classic. Lavery Spar brothers have really been the perfect middle of the lineup for this Pounders team. The number nine seed, folks. They've done a great job. They've done a great job thus far. So you sit here and say, well, look, we took on Belmo, Buttruff, and McCune. Smooth sailing. Six consecutive strikes to start. Next up is Waco. Parker Bone the third company. Are you surprised? Uh, yes and no. Okay. Um, you know, I think you've got a the, the middle of the lineup of the Pounders is a is a young lineup. Uh, <laughs> AJ Chapman's never won before. And then you know you've got Sean Rash uh, at the anchor position. He's been there before. And then Dick Allen leading off. And you know, like I said, former MVP. But it was always kind of a curiosity factor as to what the middle of that team was going to do, right? Yep. And they've performed brilliantly. LAX, on the other hand, you know, guys, veterans that have been here before, um, and they just got ran over. Especially when you talk about the fact they have four major champions on that on that roster. Wow! They have had it all go their way. AJ Chapman. And now you think we got through LAX. Next up, a, an interesting Waco team. But Thomas is a very interesting Waco team. We'll get to that when we, we will. We, we talk about them when they're up. But I mean, you got Parker Bone the third on that team who is 60 years old. And he hasn't missed a meet. That's still amazing. Well, Belmo, this will not be his year. 15 time major champion. He's never been part of an Elias Cup title run. All 10 years since Elias Cup was established in 2013 with LAX. Yeah, it's a shame too because I, I i mean i'm a fan and i'm a fan of bowling i'm a fan of great bowlers and I, I love watching great bowling and you know you like to get as much of this guy right here as you can they're trying to savor at this crowd trying to savor the moments that they'll see him what to you makes him so Extraordinary. Uh, well, obviously his technique, second to none, right? Maybe Anthony Simonson um, in terms of physical uh, prowess, physical game. But Del Monte reminds me a lot of Tiger Woods mentally, and the way he, the way he plods, the way he navigates, and then his self-belief and confidence. I think it's unlike any. I think it's unmatched on the PBA Tour. Unmatched. I think his level. I think, I think, I, I said it before about Jason Belmonte when he's firing it all, on all cylinders. He is unbeatable. And I still believe that. Today though, Sean Rash, the Milwaukee Pounders, have shown everybody, maybe they're the frisky nine hey. seed. Maybe. I mean, I mean, give credit where credit's due, right? They're striking. They don't have an open frame in two games. They have one seven count. That was by Chapman, his first shot. Everything else is nine spare. They've struck every shot but five in two games. All right, make that six if you want to count the fill shot. Waco. The awaits the wonders and will face Parker the bone the third we're wondering what we're in for from that there's some questions for this Waco team to answer Johnny Petraglia's group 
What do they have in store for us on a Sunday night in Portland? Find a lobster roll, please. The 2023 PBA League Elias Cup playoffs presented by Pass Blue Ribbon continue tomorrow live on FS1 7 Eastern with quarterfinal action Tuesday at 8 Eastern with the semifinals and Wednesday on FS1 as well at 8 Eastern with the finals. There's Wes Malott and the Portland Lumberjacks winning the Elias Cup last year, their third consecutive Elias Cup title. That's what the fans this week are here in Portland for to see if the Lumberjacks can claim a fourth consecutive Elias Cup championship. John Fanta, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson, back with you. So what do you make of the Lumberjacks? A fourth Elias Cup title? Is that your expectation heading into the week? How do you see it? I don't think anybody expected them to lead this, and yet here they are again. And I, I'll tell you what, a lot has to be said about home field advantage, right? I mean, they are the favorites here in Portland, Maine. They're the Lumberjacks. Three in a row, they've won this event and looking for an unprecedented fourth Elias Cup title. Let's head to our pressing questions presented by Go Bowling. Portland, Maine is our happy place in the PBA. Kimberly Bressler asked everybody around the tour what their happy place is. Kevin, where's your happy place? In the studio recording music every hour of my life. Tell me, where is your happy place? Very easy. It's Holly Tree Country Club at home uh, with my good buddies out there playing golf, especially my buddy Tyler Godley. Um, you know, he and I like to get out there and gamble a little bit and have a good time. Dom, where's your happy place? <laughs> oh, yeah, bowling's bowling, and I do love bowling. I love the competition a lot, and that's why I practice. But uh, always at home with wife and uh, little boy, taking him to school, just doing, you know, normal things, popping down the pub, seeing the boys. Kyle, where's your happy place? My happy place? Oh, the gym. When I'm just jamming out, I'm just lifting weights and... Yeah, that's the happy place. My happy place has to be my backyard. I have like a potting green that I spend like uh, at least half an hour a day. Where's your happy place? Oh, I know that one. Uh, in the mountains, middle of nowhere, uh, with probably a, a rifle or a bow, just sitting in the stand hunting. I love to be on a sporting field. I love running around, whether it be cricket, rugby, uh, I'll do indoor like squash, tennis, basketball. I really enjoy my sports. I would have picked somewhere like Fiji. <laughs> it's close enough. It's only one flight. Oh, happy place. It's just a quiet, calm mind. Probably a little slot machine going. Some free ice cream, good music. Yeah. Did you just like float away to there while you were talking about it? I did, it sounded really good. I, I think I'm gonna have to get some ice cream now. <laughs> Randy Peterson, what's your happy place? John, my happy place is calling the action on the PBA tour with you. Any chance I can get. I appreciate that. Love these fans. We love Portland. We love Portland. Let's take a look at the step ladder, where we stand. The story right now is can the Milwaukee Pounders keep this going? They've got Waco next. I mean, uh, Baker bowling is tough, and it's tough to score, right? because you have to have five guys stringing strikes. But right now, the Pounders are averaging over 250 for their first two games tonight. Let's meet the Waco Wonders. Hall of Fame veteran Parker Bohm III is the leader of the newest team in the PBA League, the Waco Wonders, a team that was narrowly eliminated in last year's semifinals. Returning this season to once again join Parker Bohm. Jason Sterner and B.J. Moore. Let's meet the Snickers Waco Wonders. Leading off, Jason Sterner. Bowling second, Frank Snodgrass. The man in the middle, B.J. Moore. Yes, sir. Hi, boys. 
Bowling fourth, Parker Bone the third. The anchor, Ryan Simonelli. The Waco Wonders are managed by PBA Hall of Famer Johnny Petraglia. Can Petraglia and the Wonders advance, or will Milwaukee keep this run to the stepladder going? Seven versus nine is next. Moments away from continuing our play-in round of the PBA League Elias Cup presented by Pabst Blue Ribbon. We are at Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. The all-new Undisputed is here. Skip Bayless is back. Joined by NFL legends Richard Sherman, Michael Irvin, and Keyshawn Johnson. Undisputed weekdays at 9.30 Eastern only on FS1. So... The Waco Wonders, their lineup. Randy Peterson, you talked about this team. What's the key in their lineup in your mind? Well, I think the key is Frank Snodgrass. In qualifying the 10 games, he had 20 shots. He opened seven times. And speaking with Johnny Petraglia, he needs to turn that around. Uh, I mean, it, especially in a one-game match. So if Frank cleans it up, this team's got just as good a shot as anyone. Snodgrass, the rookie. And who better to have as an instructor than Johnny Petraglia, the 14-time PBA Tour champion. Legend. You know, Johnny signed me my first ball contract. Wow. Yeah. First one. Back in 1989. Nothing but respect for Johnny Petraglia. The Pounders get it started and they just start right where they left off. Dick Allen has been that leadoff man. I mean, they, they've done it all so far in two games in a frame, right? They cracked open a six pack, they're averaging over 250. This man right here, talk about a turnaround in careers. Jason Sterner. I mean, this guy's a force now out here. Sterner, three time PBA Tour champion. 2021 King of the Lanes. And that turnaround on display. A lot of success in this building as well for Jason. But I'll tell you one thing, he's one hell of a guy. How so? He's just a great dude, man. He's just polite, he's respectful, always says hello. Another guy on their team that comes from the same pedigree, B.J. Moore. Wiki, watch him throw it. Unbelievable. Randy, X factor to the Pounders in their run thus far, it's these twins, Lavery Spars have been fantastic, and here's Anthony. Push. Push. Now that means hold. Got it up the lane just a little bit, but he's using urethane. The only player we've seen thus far, and he's still in the urethane ball, and push means hold your head, hold your line. This one creeps high, just leaves the four pit. But you're right, I mean, the Spar brothers have performed beautifully thus far for Captain Marshall Holman. Nine career PBA regional titles for Anthony Avery Spar. Well, folks, you want to be a better bowler? You want to strike more often? Head on over to Lane Talk and find out what your stats are and how they match up to all the pros out here on the PBA Tour. For more information, head on over to LaneTalk.com. So here he is, Frank Snodgrass, the rookie. Ninth in the U.S. Open earlier this year. One, two, and four. One, two, and four left for Frank Snodgrass. Look how far right he got that out to the two board. And if you were playing golf, you'd have to reload because that would be OB. He won the PDA Store.com Classic earlier this year. And one by Parker Bone the third, EJ Tackett, notably. There you go. Snodgrass felt good about that. 
And that is your spare of the game, sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Want to get moving fast with same day mortgage? You can go from application to approval in as little as one business day. Time to get your dream home crazy fast. Learn more at rate.com. Well, folks, you're not seeing double from one twin to the other. Here's Sean Lavery Spar. 12th year as a pro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you talk about this Baker system and the format of this, Randy, and how much communication is key to everything. Well, I, I think all of the momentum and advantages uh, on the pounders. I mean, they, they know exactly what the pair of lanes is doing. But I think it's also worth noting. I think it's also worth noting that unlike LAX, manager Johnny Petraglia chose to start on the right lane and finish on the left lane. Which we saw go the other way earlier, as you just alluded to. And from the moment that that decision was made, we were scratching our heads. I know you were. And here's A.J. Chapman. You see, he's been close in his career. Pounders with that youth in the middle. Two, four, ten, so, two, four, ten. Wouldn't expect that on that left lane. That's the lane that's the, the better of the two. And an errant shot by A.J. Chapman. He is going to try to get the ball over here and then cut that two pin into the 10. Oh. Right idea, right? Yeah, that, you know, something just happened for the first time after the first four frames of game one. The pounders are behind. So here he is, the 60-year-old, Parker Bowen III. Coming up on four decades as a pro. 35 PBA Tour titles. Was inducted into the PBA Hall of Fame in 2000. Legend. That's 60 years old, folks. Try that. 400 rev rate, thrown at 20 miles an hour. Go ahead. I dare you. How about that knee bend at age 60? Man, that's impressive. That's some good cartilage. <laughs> <laughs> and he finishes off the spare. Welcome to the beer frame. It's sponsored by Pass Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ask for the original Love and please you. drink responsibly. I mean, since we're here in Portland, Maine, Beer frames are great, though. I mean, you can have a beer frame anywhere, right? But I think here in Portland, Maine, we should have a lobster frame, too. We should. You know, get a local sponsor and, yep. you know? Well, what we found out at dinner last night was is that one restaurant owner could work for four or five different restaurants in this town. True. It's all in the family. It is. It's such a great town, folks. If you've never been, you've never been out here, you have to get here. Rash finishes it off. I'd never been out here to Portland, had heard when we were visiting back in the springtime how unbelievable this atmosphere is, the vibe they've been coming here for the last decade. There were fans, folks, ready to go this morning. They've been waiting for this. Simonelli, what a strike. Big time for Waco. Ryan Simonelli and the Waco Wonders trying to shut down the Milwaukee Pounders Cinderella run. Elias Cup, it's in full swing in Portland. Stay up to date on the latest PBA news, including being one of the first to see the 2024 PBA Tour schedule. Just head to PBA.com to sign up for PBA emails today. Welcome back to Portland, Maine. 
Shipping up to Boston, that song is playing. These fans are into it. We've got the Pounders and the Wonders, the Wonders of Waco, the Pounders of Milwaukee. And right back to Dick Allen. Yeah, yeah. He's been automatic in this role. Stays that way. Yeah, over to the tricky right lane, but let's see what kind of adjustments that uh, Waco's going to make. We're going to go down to the manager, Johnny Petraglia. Johnny, what kind of adjustments do you and your team make going all over this left lane? Well, we figured that it would take them uh, five on their start and then come back, and they finish on this, so it's ten shots. The pair might be a little bit different for them. And uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. On the left. So I think that's a pretty good shot by Jason, but I think he anticipated more breakdown, more hook, and probably made too big of a move going over to that left lane. So now he's going to go back to his teammates and say, all right, well, I moved this many. It was too much. This is all going to be predicated on the comeback that the Pounders can make on the difficult right lane, the tricky one, and not one double yet here in game three. Turner. It did. You can feel it here again. Milwaukee, folks, they've had to win two just to get to this point. Eliminating the Chicago Breeze, taking out Jason Belmonte, Jacob Buckruff, Evan McCune, and LAX. Anthony Lavery Spar! They are strong at the top. Wonder Twin Powers activate. Guess you didn't see that. That show, no? Well, the well, twin the twins are doing just just fine. Justice League. Yeah. There you go. They're doing just fine. Randy, you're my super friend. <laughs> Snodgrass. Fortunate nine's not standing with that shot. And this just lets the Pounders right back in it with a spare. They're only trailing by one. And yet again, it's the team who's making that choice, the higher seed of where to start, where to finish, that it doesn't seem to matter for the Pounders. And, and let's not discount the time in between shots for these players, right? Because you have to factor that in. Look out. Oh, no! Snodgrass. Another open for Snodgrass. That was the concern coming in. Wow. The rookie. And so now, after trailing early, it looked like they had lost some of that momentum. The number nine seed, Sean Lavery Spar. Now you have that killer instinct. These Man. twin brothers have had it all day. They've been striking everything. Man, it's like throwing chum in the water. Sean Lavery Spar. Oh. You're kidding me. Anything you could have done better there. Uh, yeah, you could have struck. I mean, this is a really good shot. <laughs> right. Oh. Yep. Yeah, that's just like a, like a kick below the midsection. Come on. Pick it up. Marshall Holman felt optimistic when he woke up this morning that maybe this team could put a run together. Yeah. He's far and the rookie completes it. I'll tell you what, win or lose, the Twins held up their, their part of the bargain. They did. Right? B.J. Moore. Watch this. You want to talk about efficiency of motion? Watch B.J. Moore throw it.
right now it's up to A.J. Chapman. He's been a little spotty, but right now he can set up the 10th frame. You just heard B.J. Moore say, rally time, boys. Rally time. They got a rally cap on. Big shot here. Moore just put it on. This is a huge one for Chapman. And it did not fall. Back to back, ring and tens for the Pounders. And now for the first time tonight, they're in jeopardy of being sent home. Wow. Wow. The max scores Good just shot. changed, folks. Pounders, 206 with a spare here. The Waco Wonders, 218. So that's not grass air. They might be able to survive despite it. Two really nice shots, but only nine spare to show for. And they were working on a double, and they could have really ended this. And right now, the Hall of Famer, the legend, Parker Bone III, with a strike here in the ninth frame, will inch his team that much closer to sending the Pounders back to Milwaukee. 35 PBA Tour titles, 10 PBA 50 Tour titles. He's raised 45 trophies in his career. Wow! That's that? what was the goal of Johnny Petrago instructing, rather putting together this team. Parker Bone the third. You need me to hype you up? You need me to hype you up? How about that? 60-year-old Parker Bone the third. What a shot he threw right there. And it's 60. Rash had to have it. Absolutely had to have it. Yeah, he knows. He's got to go off. Now, he goes off the sheet. He'll force Simonelli to get the first hit in the 10th and good count. So, Simonelli, no matter what Rash does, Simonelli can go strike, nine, spare, game's over. Rash right now is looking at one thing, one thing only. That's striking out to shoot 206, putting all the pressure back on Ryan Simonelli. Three rack from Rash. Absolutely. Take your time. Make him think about it. Wonders with two. Just saw on your screen. <laughs> a correction here, he's just waiting on a ball. Okay, Sean. The thing with Simonelli is that it, there's times when he gets too jacked. Real strong guy, he likes to throw it hard. Sometimes he gets too amped, overthrows it. He's got to somehow manage his pulse, his uh, heart rate and his pulse. He wants to beat us so bad. Before he steps up in the 10th frame. And look, this atmosphere is tense. It's just a different animal out here in Portland. Sean Rash needs it. Gets Got it. it! Thank you, sir. May I have another? Randy, he's got a game face. You can sense that he's got the 17 PBA tour titles in 19 years professionally. It's pretty cool. You know, Ryan was on our team. Fourth at the USBC Masters. He beat Parker Bone the third on that run. Wait, how long ago was that? This year. Dombrowski was on that show. Kyle Sherman. Get 10. Gets eight. Now that mm. makes Simonelli's job a lot easier, but Simonelli still needs first strike in the 10th frame. So, all eyes on Ryan Simonelli. The Ryan Express. This is what you live for as a professional. Even more pressure when you have teammates relying on you. 2015, he was the player of the year runner-up to Belmont. Ryan Simonelli, the Express! Motoring! Wow! Can't throw any better than this. You know, this is a guy that retired from full-time PBA Tour competition in July of 2020 to further his career in construction management. But then one year later, he returned. Fell eight, back in love. Eight to tie, nine to win. Eight to tie, nine to win, Simonelli! He did better than that! The Waco Wonders are moving on. Ah, yes, sir! Here's
He's the guy that was on Milwaukee's team last year. Yeah, it's personal. Also a Portland Lumberjack back in the day is Simonelli. Good sportsmanship from these two sides. But the Motown muscle are awaiting. They've been waiting throughout the afternoon to the evening. E.J. Tackett and Anthony Simonson are what's waiting. This was quite a run by the Pounders. Yeah, it, it really was. A great run. I mean, in this format, it's not like singles step left. I mean, you're talking about a lot of guys trying to pull together to shoot a score. And uh, to climb this ladder, tall order. They will have their hands full next. The last team we'll see tonight. Who's going to be that number six seed? Will it be E.J. Tack and Anthony Simonson in the Motown muscle? Or will the Wonders flex past them? That's next. satisfying moment of the match is sponsored by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. This was satisfying. Ryan Simonelli delivered the strike he had to. And the Waco Wonders will meet EJ Tackett, Anthony Simonson, and the Motown Muscle to decide who is that sixth team joining Silver Lake, Las Vegas, NYC, Dallas, and Portland in the quarterfinals tomorrow night. Let's meet the muscle. With two of the sport's very best on its roster, the Motown muscle are always ready to flex. Likely player of the year, EJ Tackett, and five-time major champion, Anthony Simonson, are leading a team whose best finish was second to New York in the inaugural Elias Cup Championship. Please welcome the Motown Muscle. Leading off, Sam Cooley. Bowling second, Nathan Bohr. The man in the middle, Mitch Chupé. <laughs> Bowling fourth, Anthony Simonson. <laughs> the anchor, E.J. Tackett. The Motown Muscle are managed by PBA Hall of Famer Dow Ballard Jr. And Kimberly is with EJ Tackett now. So EJ, you and Anthony Simon individually absolutely dominated the 2023 season, but you guys are on a team now. You add the rest of your teammates to it, and you guys look like an absolute powerhouse. So how do you take all of that winning momentum of the season and uh, take out a win here this entire week and grab yourself an Elias Cup? Well, you know, the, the thing is we got to win this game, and we got to – Simon and I have tried to – give our guys as much confidence as, as we can. Uh, we've had a lot of confidence in uh, each other, watching each other this, this whole season. It's been absolutely incredible, the things that both Simo and I have done this year. Watching him finish top 10 in every event has been unbelievable. So it's just feeding that, that confidence into our guys and go out there and bowl one great game. All right, good luck to you guys. Thank you. You know, Simonson top 10 in every event, but let's not forget he was top five in every major. And he's joined by E.J. Tackett, who's won five titles this year, including two majors. So let's talk about this lineup. What do you see in Motown Muscle being the key? Uh, the key is right there in your fourth and fifth spot, the two powerhouses, and how they can basically finish a game. They're at a, uh, a, a disconcerting disadvantage, I think, because they have no time on this pair. This team right here does. They know exactly what both two lanes are giving them. EJ and Simonson and Motown are coming in cold. 
Led by Dell Ballard Jr., 13-time PBA Tour winner. A fantastic career, a Hall of Fame inductee in 2009. Jason Sterner leaves the three. So they start on the left. I've told you that that right lane has been really tough. That right lane has been a tricky trickster. And Sterner cleans it up. He said he just needed to get it into the lane a little bit. Hey, our, uh, Love hearing the communication amongst these teams. Paramount. That, that is the coolest part of this event. It's the coolest part of being able to listen in to these players. Here's Sam Cooley. Won the Springfield Classic earlier this year. Cooley. Another 2A10 on that right lane. Good year for Cooley. Top 10 in the PBA points list. What do you see? I see someone who's too far to the inside part of the lane and a lot of oil down lane on the tricky right lane. Yep. Tries to use his hand to get the ball to come around the corner and it doesn't work. To come out early. That's what the managers have been saying. And so now Cooley. to start and for the muscle against these Waco Wonders. This is the key. Your number two man in this lineup, Frank Snodgrass. We talked about his opens yesterday. Snodgrass, big time for the rookie. My man, Nathan Bohr, he's sporting some good do right there. That is high level from Nathan Bohr. He's got the cut. Good shot. Good shot by Nate. It's been 21 years pro now. Steady, solid player. Kind of picks and chooses his spots. Three-time member of Team USA. Seventh at the PBA World Championship this year. That's, oh, Nate. That's disastrous there. No good. Can't afford that in a one-game Baker format. And so, for these wonders, who had to stop the Pounders run. Milwaukee had won two in a row. B.J. Moore so smooth, so clinical in everything he does. What did that break loose? Back part of the lane, you see that snap? And that's what caused the four pin to stand. Back to back open frames. 2-8-10 and a missed 10 pin. Motown. And right now, the Wonders looking to stay clean. Jay Moore, his wife Tania, PWBA player. That's how it's done, man. We knocked that over on the second try. <laughs> the Wonders are feeling good. And, and wasn't it interesting hearing Johnny Petraglia yesterday talk to us? He's like, we just didn't, we didn't play well. We, we can be so much better tomorrow. How about this guy? Oh, oh, again! Still looking for the first strike through three. Not real promising, but remember, they're going to flip-flop lanes after five frames. This man, Mitch Hoopy, Hoopy, he absolutely ran him over at the Roth-Holman doubles in Delaware earlier this season with partner Packy Hanrahan. Feely Matt Olo oh, and Sean Come on. Muscle, this is panic time early. I mean, two whip 10 pins back to back. 
three opens in a row. And now you got the hammers coming up for the Wanderers in Parker, Bone, and Simonelli. Disastrous for the muscle. Bone. He knew that he smelled some blood. 20 miles an hour for Parker. Look at that, it's pretty straight up the lane, isn't it? Nine and a half at the arrows and nine down lane. That is about as straight up the lane as you can get. And all the players on his team are calling for a holding penalty. <laughs> Here's the Swiss Army knife, Anthony Simonson. Needs a strike. The way they've been going. Simo steps up. When you need help, call the wizard. <laughs> It's a big shot here now, working on a strike. The Wonders are clean through four, and Sim Simonelli can take this lead up to 43 with a strike here in the fifth. See that main shootout win, he loves playing here. Simonelli again! Ryan Simonelli is big time! Watch this pin action. This is why you throw it hard, with a lot of power, you make the pins dance. We don't need to tell you who this is, just listen to the crowd. He's the squirrel. You know why they call him the squirrel, John? Why is that? Because it always seems like he has the nuts. He needed those nuts, all 10 of them. And for the Wonders, they might be ahead. Can Motown rally? and find some magic. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Want to move fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at rate.com. And by Go Bowling for friends and family fun. Log on to gobowling.com to find a center near you. Here we are, the Waco Wonders, up 33 on EJ Tech and Anthony Simonson, the Motown Muscles. We have the back half of this matchup to determine who is on to tomorrow night's quarterfinals in the PBA League playoffs with the Elias Cup on the line. There you go. He'll see the Lumberjacks Tuesday night. They get to wait two nights with Dallas. Starner. Playing that right side now. That was by design with the muscle. Gets the seven out late. That's the good news. The bad news is the three, six, ten. You must show it respect. Can the muscle come back? Yes, they can. Will they? No idea. But if they're going to do it, it's going to be on that left lane, I do believe. And what we've seen a lot, though, is when teams switch from the right lane to the left lane, they make too big of a move, end up coming up light. So execution and the right adjustment is paramount for Team Motown. What do you like about Sam Cooley? Yeah, it's, it's, this is captain follow through. Watch this. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I mean, this could have struck, but the problem is it didn't. And again, we've seen teams move over to that left lane, coming off the right, and that first player up for that team goes light. Well, they missed their spares in the first half of this game. So we're not able to take advantage of frame six pretty much back where we started when we came back from commercial. Down 31. And again, to set the stakes here. The NYC Kingpins are awaiting the winner of this one. And here's Frank Snodgrass. 207 average. 
And leaves the tent. Now he has struggled to finish these off. Yeah, and that average you're referring to is through 19 events and about a little over 350 games. 52nd on the point list in 2023. Can the Kingpins get the winner of this tomorrow night? FS1, Las Vegas, the High Rollers, and the Silver Lake Adam Splitters are in the 4-5 quarterfinal. And this time, Snodgrass is there with the spare. <laughs> Johnny Petraglia's group, all smiles right now. Well, it's got to start right here with Nathan Bohr. They have to strike out, in my opinion, to have any chance. He's got a little Steven Seagal look to him. Yes, he does. With that hairdo, don't you think? Yep, deserves an old-fashioned. Good shot, Nate. And again, remember, this team started with three opens in a row and missing back-to-back -back single pin spares. Two 10 pins missed by Nate and by Mitch Hupe. So some life as it goes back to B.J. Moore. A glimmer of hope. NBA Tour title 2019 Wilmington Open. Beat Sean Rash in the final. Wow, that is a big time answer by B.J. Moore. He's a two-time Elias Cup winner with Dallas. Mitch Hupe. Gotta have it. Hupe. Gotta have it. Gets it! Trip four nine late! So you're saying there's still a chance. Yes, I am. What a huge break right here. Can they capitalize? But guess what? Guess who's getting ready to come up for Johnny Petraglia's team, the Wonders. Yeah, that's right. One of the greatest of all time, that guy right there, Parker Bone III. 35 PBA Tour titles. Coming up on four decades as a pro. Oh, oh boy, the plot thickens. Don't go anywhere, folks. Yeah. Because look at that max score, folks. Look at that max score right now. And you know that Anthony Simonson and EJ Tackett are waiting in the wings for the muscle. This just got real. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Simonson looking to keep it real. Working on a double. Strike here, they can't be shut out. And a re-rack for Simo. Five career major titles. Won the Masters. Three-time winner of the Masters. Simo! Boom! Yeah, that's right. Point to the watch. It's, it's our time. The Swiss Army knife just carves up the one-three pocket. Setting his teammate up, the player EJ Tack, and he's going to run away with player of the year. But first, it's Simonelli. Who stepped up with our satisfying moment earlier. Simonelli! Oh! Stars are out in Portland! Woo, this is getting good. Simonelli strikes out. They can't be shut out. Man. Winner moves on to tomorrow night and stays alive for the Elias Cup. Books a date with the NYC Kingpins. Loser heading home. Wow! Ryan Simonelli, it's his show. It is his show. Let's go. He was with Milwaukee from 2020 to 22. He knocked out the Pounders. He was 
so looking forward to this week because he's had success here. Won that 2016 main shootout. Simonelli, how about that? That one came back a long way. It was wide. He got enough of it to make it come off of that spot. And he does exactly what he needed to do. Strikes out, puts all the pressure back on 2023's best player in EJ Tackett. How is this for theater? The likely player of the year in the PBA has to strike out. Over. The Waco Wonders. The Waco Wonders are moving on to tomorrow night. Resiliency at its finest, boys. I'm freaking proud of it. Let's go. Let's go. One more night. Never gave up. One more night. They'll need three more. The pressure was put on Tackett. He's had an unbelievable year with five titles, but tonight is Waco's night. And that's because, Randy Peterson, Ryan Simonelli was nails. Ryan Simonelli was a beast when it came to the 10th frame. That's why he's the anchor player. That's why Johnny Petraglia put him in that position. The fact that the likes of Tackett, Simo, Belmo Not are afraid. all heading home. Not afraid. The Wonders, the number seven seed, are moving on to a matchup with the NYC Kingpins, Darren and Michael Tang, and Packy Hanrahan tomorrow night. And it's the High Rollers and the Adams Footers with the Lumberjacks and Strikers waiting. A lot of great players, a lot of great bowling left. Lumberjacks, they're, they're the crowd favorites. They're the number one seed. I don't know how it gets any better than this for the Elias Cup. Prime time on FS1 the next three nights. And Kimberly is with the Wonders, who are moving on. Johnny, your team stepped up absolutely when they needed to. How proud are you guys these right here? I, I, it was just, uh, it's been a struggle for the two days, but in the clutch, Boy, the guys really came through all day yesterday and today. They were phenomenal. They absolutely did. And talking about someone who was clutch, let's talk about Ryan Simonelli here. Both times in the 10th frame you came through, but it seemed like in that first match against your former team that that 10th frame when you got two of them seemed a little personal, was it? Oh, it was personal. <laughs> I, I always believe I'm an asset in this atmosphere. Um, I thrive in the clutch, so... I think I'm always going to be uh, an asset to a team. And when I get dropped, it's surprising to me, and, and I took it personal. Well, you guys now advance, and you guys take on the kingpins. What did you learn from here tonight that you can apply tomorrow night? Yeah, I mean, we, we just have great chemistry. So I think we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. We, we work well together. So uh, closing frames and, and reading off each other and, and really creating that momentum for each other. Well, congratulations to you guys. You. you move on to tomorrow night. The Ryan Express, a freight train tonight. They'll need three more nights of it, but it's all about surviving. A reminder that our coverage of the 2023 PBA League Elias Cup continues tomorrow, live on FS1 at 7 Eastern with quarterfinal action right here from Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. Coming up here on FS1 at 7.30 Eastern, it's Major League Soccer as Orlando City FC hosts Inter Miami. Randy Peterson, a blast to be with you for Kimberly Pressler, John, for our thank producer you. David Bruner. Thank you so much, John, man. Always, an, always a pleasure to work with you, my friend. Our entire crew, I'm John Fanta. We'll talk to you tomorrow night at 7 Eastern on FS1. You've been watching the PBA on FS1.